Welcome to the round table where we talk about what's going on in anime right now. And sure enough, we have a story for this week. Studio Piero uh, came out talking about, uh, in an interview, some changes they're making to their uh, approach to anime. Now, I'm actually pulling up Studio Piero's kind of, um, uh, well, we'll just call it their Wikipedia article. Um, they do shows like O, oh, Naruto, Bleach, Tokyo Ghoul, Yu Yu Hakusho, Black Clover, Boruto. The stuff you never heard of, I'm sure. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Short series, not very popular. Short, short form. Short form works, exactly. Yes. Uh, well, OVA is really it. <laughs> mostly yes. Uh, so they've been, uh, they've said they're they're kind of they have to kind of keep with the changing anime industry, and so they're known for long running anime series, particularly shonen series, obviously, right. um, like the ones we we mentioned, Naruto, Boruto, Bleach, etc. Um, and the producer Yoshihiro Tomonaga said in the interview that um, uh, there has been. <laughs> a, other production companies have been producing extremely high-quality animation while dividing the show's broadcast into separate shorter seasons. Demon Slayer! <laughs> you know, basically. Um, and uh, he said, quote, There is value in having people enjoy our animation without interruption over a long period, such as two or three years, but we are not good at producing high-quality works such as Jujutsu Kaisen in a short period of time. Which is a very bold thing for somebody at a company to say about themselves. Right. Uh, so basically, they're saying it's increasingly difficult to produce the high quality expected of them without under interruption. So they're starting to reconsider things and they're establishing a new Piero Films brand, which will produce original works as well as manga adaptations, like so many other companies. Um, they're also basically going to start focusing more on individual seasons, not just do continuous weekly shows for years and years, right. uh, and do, again, sort of the Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen formula and structure. Um, in fact, um, uh, its president, Michiyuki Homa, commented a few weeks ago saying the Demon Slayer was a major turning point in the anime industry, uh, and he said that after watching it, quote, I really felt that we had to change the way we create things. Furthermore, other studios are releasing high-quality works on a similar scale, and Japan has an environment where it can be watched on commercial television, end quote. Meaning, you know, direct competition. You know, they're in the same, they're in the same commercial television that we are, and they're able to produce stuff at this level of quality. We've got to keep up. Yeah, we've got to keep on going. And there is something to be said to, to no longer doing the long form like that. Uh, for those of us who watched, like Bleach was one of the one ones on, on that list that I watched from not beginning to end, but I watched yeah. a significant portion of it. And it really was like, you know, you had to watch it week to week or, you know, however you were getting it. And it, it just didn't end. There was no, there was no break of just like going, okay, we're going to give you Hello Kitty for a couple of weeks so that you can take a <laughs> breath and, you know, then recharge and come back in and instead what they were doing was you know we were talking about it earlier filler and yeah. you know so we would have the the story arc of the one character that we never really got to see before and then we fall in love with the character and then of course once we get back into the regular storyline he dies within three episodes of mm -hmm. the story you know, stuff like that yeah so it's just kind of nice to to finally see kind of like the, the industry as a whole kind of coalescing and just going Let's make this a little bit more approachable. Mm -hmm. Can't all be yeah. one piece. Okay. The other thing, too, is it allows, it makes it easier for um, fans to appreciate the show in yeah. manageable chunks where they can say, okay, if you really, you know, the, the classic, you know, <clears throat> the show gets really good in season three. Mm -hmm. Right. Or this arc really defines the show really well. And so, you know, you get that in season two. Season one is more set up. So you can understand the show and kind of pitch it to people a little more easily than you can when it's just like, okay, start at episode 23. Yeah. And go to episode 31 <laughs> and then skip ahead three episodes. Uh, because that's not going to matter. Why not? Tentacles, <laughs> just move, move along, you know. Um, and also, yeah, episode 231 is the best. Um, um, but, but also... The shonen manga are generally done in arcs anyway. So it makes sense to kind of say, okay, let's just animate right. an arc. 
and yeah. put that out there and move on from there. Um, I can't really think of a lot of downsides to this. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we all complain about filler. We all complain about the, the, you know, the unstoppable force. Well, I think what's interesting here, though, is it used to be received wisdom that in order to be like a big three shonen anime, in order to be one of these unstoppable franchises, you had to be weekly. Yeah. You know, and you, you had to have that formula. Everyone else was doing well, you know, and you could spike. You could be a Harvey Suzumiya, um, but you were not going to have that momentum. Demon Slayer has the momentum, you know. Jujutsu Kaisen has the momentum. So that's no longer true anymore. I think now, certainly, yeah. you're fine. And also, that is a, a boon to... Um, <clears throat> the animators themselves. I yeah. mean, that, you know, can you just imagine? What do you do for a living? I draw Naruto <laughs> every day. Please kill me. You know, it's, it's just, mm-hmm. you know, it, but, but in all seriousness. And also what that does is that it, when it gives you that kind of a break and for, produ- for even on the production side of things, that enables them to actually look at other projects and mm-hmm. reevaluate priorities and things like that. So maybe... So maybe by doing this, we actually get maybe we might possibly I don't know maybe get a little bit more quality stuff. Well, and it's very nice that they're they're looking to do more original works. Yeah, it's, it's always good to see more original anime out there. Yeah, uh, it's also interesting though. It's a little bit riskier from a commercial perspective, because, you know, that weekly episode of Naruto is a weekly check. Yeah, it's, it's much more stable income to be saying we're going to be you know animating bleach for the next 10 years um and so because you know people have got to stay employed so once you shift off this season of that show you gotta have something else to shift everyone on to so it, I, I wonder also studio piero isn't basically saying obviously this is something that most studios have to work with anyway uh, basically saying we're willing to take that sort of organizational structural hit right uh for the uh reputational risk of churning out a show that gets this reputation of being um, formulaic or just low quality. Right. Um, yeah, well, and kind of mono, I mean, it's, it's got to be complicated to be able to say, like, who is working on what, right? Like, because mm-hmm. um, typically, ideally, you have the same batch of animators working on the same show to maintain consistency. Um, now they're not, not always working on the same episode so you may have one batch working on episode one another on episode two another episode three and then they cycle over you know as they finish one episode they move on to the next um, but still like there's got to be a lot of figuring that out and, and you know we were talking about this a little bit before we came online where we were just I was kind of joking around just going maybe they you're doing an audit and they found out that like a number of their contractors were North Korean, but you know, uh, so, um, <clears throat> but you know, again, that's, that's one of the things where it's just like, maybe it is, it is also good for them to pare down, you know, financially and just say, okay, let's take restock and just streamline this a little bit better. And I think something we haven't even talked about is to produce this much animation the old way requires just an army of subcontractors and other other companies you're working with to do all of the in between animation work and all the other other stuff you're doing. So this is, you know, uh I wonder if there wasn't sort of a a step back looking at all of that process and saying maybe this is a little riskier than we realize it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's going to be like a, a blow to the black market, though. Remember in Otaku No Video, where the guy's just like, yeah, I just walk into studios and I grab <laughs> yeah. things. And, you know. So, yeah, it's going to be a little tougher for those guys. But I don't mm. feel so bad for them. No. Um, North Korea has plenty of anime now. So, <laughs> not, not really a problem. Do. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Didn't we watch it? Or did you show that one in one of your panels about the kid who falls asleep tr- learning trigonometry and he has this bad dream where he can't fend off the Americans invading North Korea because he didn't learn how to do. I don't remember that. The, no. the geometry of, of shooting the gunboats. Oh, wow. So he and these anthropomorphic, you know, cute animals are like gunning down and, and destroying Americans trying to. And it's all like kind of like very child. You know, it's, it's geared for kids, literally. Mm-hmm. 
And so this this little kid is just like, like oh, I'm tired. I'm gonna go to sleep, and I don't want to do my math homework. That's this horrible dream. <laughs> oh no, the capitalist invaders took over North Korea because I didn't learn how to use my slide rule. No, I I just remember the that their long running anthropomorphic animals in the army. Oh god, anime yeah. in North Korea, where yeah. it's it's all you know, like squirrels and rabbits and so forth, where they're like in the North Korean army, like with rifles, you know, and they have all these stories and adventures over the course of, of their thing. It's, it's rather odd. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, CGI is another element mm -hmm. of this whole story where um, uh, I think for a while CGI was so new that it had to be outsourced, but it was so, it was so difficult to make that part of the of the show that it, that required a lot of interaction between those two folks, which is very expensive, right? Right. Um, and then they started adding like uh, cars and motorbikes; those were easy to animate. And they started adding those production pipelines in, in into the uh, the studios themselves. And so I think now that that all of that is pretty standard, I think that's also helped a lot. Where I think the, the industry isn't as, as much tradi uh, transition as they were a few years ago, so. Yeah, I, I can remember as, uh, uh, like about three or four years ago, I was not impressed with CGI anime, and I was just like, rrr, 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 stay off my lawn. And, but it's gotten steadily better. I mean, mm -hmm. it just has, yeah. and, and you know, so. I'm, I'm also realizing we have the occasional all CGI anime. Um, right. And we have CGI for uh, dancing shows. You know, mm -hmm. they'll have CGI sequences for those. And we have CGI cars and planes and such. Um, but other than that, like, I haven't seen CGI push much beyond those recently either. Right. Uh, I feel like we're, we're pretty much standard in, you know, most things are 2D, except when those, in those certain moments when they need, like, 3D characters for dance sequence. Uh, like right. Pretty, uh, um, Umusume Pretty Derby, they're, that's 2D almost the entire time. So, yeah, I, I think also that's, that's kind of in stasis now. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think we're uh, we're 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 at an interesting point for the industry. And I, but I, I totally am glad that Studio Piero is also like stating this publicly mm -hmm. and admitting that the old way of doing things wasn't working for them from a quality perspective. It's so rare for a company to come out and say we are not up to our quality standards. We need yeah. to change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, that's that. Hope you found that interesting. Thank you for watching. See you all next week.